I think we're live. Welcome to the stream, everybody. December 24th stream brought to you by COVID. So uh, like so many people around the world, I'm kind of confined to my, uh, my spot here. I don't want to put my, my parents at risk. Think about how old, you know, I'm 169 years old. Imagine how old my parents are. They're at least half my age. So you don't want to expose them to COVID. So I figure we'll do a, a live stream. We had like almost, was it, eight, 900 people respond to my post on um, YouTube. So I figured, yeah, we'll do a quick one. I have a bunch of articles I've been meaning to talk about. This one we're going to talk about today is on TypeScript. Apparently it's uh, doing pretty good on GitHub. And we'll, uh, we'll read what the article says. It's on ZDNet, so I'm hoping the quality pretty decent. Yes, a Merry Christmas, everyone, if applicable. And uh, if, uh, if you don't celebrate Christmas, just celebrate with us. Have a good time. It's okay. Um, I'm not having alcohol. One of the number one rules of being a live streamer is don't live stream while drinking. Get you in trouble. So coffee for me. Mm. But feel free to uh, drink whatever you like. Here we go. Stream quality has automatically been lower because internet connection is failing. I hope the internet connection stays well. Anyway, that's okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I hope everybody's good. Ruby rules coupon is no longer working. All right. Uh, after the stream, I will we'll put a new coupon on there uh, so that it will work. Give me like a half an hour after the stream is over. I'll put one up that will work for you. All right, so I hope everybody's well. How many people? We've got 50 people. You know, we had about over 800, 900 people, somewhere between 8 and 900 people answered my survey yesterday with 70% saying they would want to uh, see a Christmas stream. So, uh, you know, that would suggest like 500 people. So what's going on? Slackers. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, Merry Christmas. Thanks for all the knowledge. Hey, no problem. You know what it is, you know. Sometimes your fate you cannot escape. Uh, I come from a family of teachers. My father was a teacher, many my aunts, many my cousins. So I, I had no intentions of becoming a teacher, but I discovered when I was in the corporate, when I was doing uh, corporate work as a developer, I discovered that I kept getting over and over again from um, the suits when I would present uh, a. Um, an RFP, whatever, not a, not a, excuse me, when I would pr present a proposal for software, they'd always tell me how it was very clearly laid out. Um, and I, I, I attribute that to just the family genetics, you know. Anyhow, so here I am teaching. That's good. I enjoy it, actually. Good evening, Sir Mischuk from Burnmouth, UK. Thanks for joining. I tried to get a little earlier because I know people in Europe... Uh, in Africa and Asia, they were having to stay up really late to see a stream. So I'm hoping this is kind of a, oh, you know what? A nice middle ground. I forgot, I have Christmas lights and I forgot to put them up. Oh, oh well. Well, since it's um, COVID times, I might do a stream tomorrow because I can't really leave. We're locking down in Quebec here. It's crazy how TypeScript made it this far of a jump. Yeah, I did. It jumped quite up quite a bit. All right, so, you know, 68, let me just jump into the subject of the day. And if you miss it, you're coming in, well, they'll have to can watch the replay. So let me just jump into it. Um, here we go. Let's see. There we go. So from ZDNet, let me zoom in so you guys can see it clearly. There we go. So programming language, Microsoft TypeScript leaps ahead of C-sharp PHP, C++ on GitHub. New figures show that Microsoft TypeScript has rapidly become an essential programming language for web developers. Let's take a look. Uh, in case you don't know, TypeScript is essentially a superset over JavaScript. It's strongly typed. It, uh, it's kind of JavaScript-esque, uh, but adds extra uh, nuances to the language to make it easier for... Um, uh, for people to write code, it's clean. 
Um, Christy from Hawaii, good beach day. I This will be more fun. See, that's... Uh, I'm pretty jealous of you, uh, Christy. That's all I got to say. It's nice and snowy up here in Canada. Anyway, let me just jump into the article. Um, Microsoft just bought MTM. This article is from December 3rd. All right, Microsoft superset of JavaScript, TypeScript, has shot up to become the fourth most popular programming language on the Code Colab platform, GitHub. I haven't read this article before, so we're both reading it at the same time. We'll see what it has to say. TypeScript's ascent is tracked in Microsoft-owned GitHub's 2020 State of the Octoverse report, which has just published, has just had been published. Before 2016, TypeScript was not in the top 10 languages in GitHub's rankings, but it climbed to seventh position in 2018 and over the past year shot up to the fourth spot, fourth spot, excuse me, eclipsing C Sharp, PHP, C++. The top three languages are JavaScript followed by Python and Java. As you can see, crusty old PHP is still in the top five, well, top 10. So anyway, that's interesting. TypeScript is an effort from Microsoft to improve JavaScript by introducing static type system and it compiles into JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. So static, well, we'll get into that later. That type of system which assigns type declarations and annotations to data that make a pro to make that make a program offers developers a more efficient version of JavaScript that compiles into JavaScript without type annotations so that the code runs in browsers as pure JavaScript. There you go. So let me translate that into non-nerd. Uh, you write TypeScript, but kind of looks like JavaScript, but has extra capabilities in there that uh, will make the code more robust, more easy to debug and so forth, less buggy. But what it does, it then, it compiles it, transforms it into uh, JavaScript so it can run in your web browser. There's benefits to that, of course. Um, Microsoft released TypeScript in 2012. After two years of internal development, the scripting language would turn 10 in December. You know, this is interesting. TypeScript is like basically one of the hot new languages that's uh, 10 years old. <laughs> TypeScript's creator, Anders Heilsberg, I don't know, I can't pronounce that properly, a Microsoft technical fellow and father of C Sharp, so he wrote C Sharp, he had to sell the idea of an open source language to Microsoft Top Brass in 2010 when the company was under then CEO, CEO Steve Ballmer was still edgy about open source. Yeah, Microsoft's culture has changed since the new CEO came in. And essentially, uh, they realized that they got to embrace open source, embrace other platforms. Prior to that, they were really trying to protect their own products. They were really trying to pre protect Windows and their languages. And they realized, well, no, let's, let's support everything and Linux and, and different languages. Let's open it up and let's just provide tools for developers. And I think it's been a great strategy. They've done well. Uh, James Governor, co-founder of developer analyst from Redmond, thinks TypeScript's surging popularity over recent years is because it satisfi satisfies JavaScript's developers' need for type safety. Its rise on GitHub suggests that TypeScript is a language that won't disappear anytime soon. I would agree with that. Uh, the, one of the big problems with JavaScript is that it's a loosely typed language. Um, so that means that you can write code and you can introduce, again, without going into details, check out my JavaScript course, you want to see that. You can introduce errors into your code that are not obvious, where, especially when you're in the heat of coding, because JavaScript has this weird, it's, it's unusual behavior where it, it, it does things that other programming languages like TypeScript wouldn't allow you to do uh, for the sake of expediency, if you will. But then it can introduce these weird, really weird, insidious errors into your code base that could be hard to debug. So I guess TypeScript takes care of that. In mid-2019, mid-2019, TypeScript overtook PHP, which was the third most popular language on GitHub in 2016 but it is now six most commonly used in project hosts on GitHub. Let me emphasize how important this is. Notice how dead old PHP is still in the top six. Um, I think PHP in terms of server-side programming, it's still the number one language, server-side. It's still, and that's one of the reasons I teach PHP because for um, 
especially for freelance, it's such an important language. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, TypeScript has become popular with web developers with large JavaScript code bases, including S Slack, Airbnb, Bloomberg, Microsoft also wrote its popular open source cross-platform cross code editor Visual Studio code in TypeScript. That I did not know. That I did not know. So Visual Studio code is a TypeScript application. There you go. Hmm. Google developers behind Angular are fans of TypeScript. The language has also been spurred by the demise of Adobe Flash, which will reach end of life this month. That was December, this December and will no longer be supported by any major browser next year. That only took, uh, how many years did it take Flash to be totally destroyed? Nine years after Steve Jobs whacked it out. <laughs> uh, TypeScript emerged from Microsoft after the Internet Explorer and Edge browsers had already lost the browser wars to Google Chrome, which, has, which had the powerful V8 JavaScript engine. V8, I believe, is also behind Node as well which is basically JavaScript on the server. Uh, at, the same time, HTML, H, at the same time, HTML5 was happening and developers were building larger JavaScript apps where development tools like automated code completion could help. Key to TypeScript success is support from popular code editors, including JetBrains WebStorm, Emacs, and Visual Studio Code. TypeScript has also become essential for Deno, a potential successor to Node.js. The ubiquitous runtime for running JavaScript outside a browser. Deno uses Google's V8 engine and is written in Mozilla created Rust. Oh, there you go. So nice little chart here. It's going on with PHP. So PHP in 2014 was number four. And then I guess in 2019, it dropped down to number six which is still way above Ruby, as you can see down here, way down here, Ruby. Hmm. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, is that it? Uh, that's it. Wow, that was a quick article. Good. We're done with that. How many people are on board? I don't know. Let's go back. I guess we'll do a little Q&A. I hope you enjoyed that. So a little information. Uh, what to take away? Um, you know, the new hot technology, TypeScript, is 10 years old. Garbage PHP is still in the top six. Much more popular than Ruby. Uh, yeah, so, you know, this desire for the latest and greatest is, uh, you know, it's kind of old school because, you know, things are pretty well established in the game. All right, so let's see what we got here for some Q&A here. Hey, Stefan, how can I move from my current position as a web developer? I want to move to a higher position. I am somehow stuck or in comfortable zone and do not and dot not dot know what and where is my next stop? <laughs> um, I know what you're asking there. One thing I, I don't point out enough is that if you want to advance in your career, especially within a corporate environment, you want to really develop your communication skills, especially if you want to get outside of coding, you want to get into uh, higher positions. Communication skills are a big uh, and very important thing. That's why I'm putting out new courses on all that soon. Stuff will start coming out in January. And it's so important. You know, if you're an established developer and you have functional skills and you're capable, before I would learn a new language, I would learn to develop your communication skills, written and verbal, and get some psychology skills in there as well. That will help you rise uh, faster uh, in terms of your career. Uh, Satya Nadella is my pastor. Nothing will be missing. All right. Uh, yes, that's it. Is, exactly, it does. Does JavaScript give excuse me, does TypeScript give JavaScript strongly type qualities? That's exactly what it does. I have not written, I looked at TypeScript a while back and I just remember, my memory says it's a strongly typed JavaScript, which is good. One of the things, like when I was first putting together, uh, well, excuse me, when I was first thinking about my courses, uh, even though my, I've written more lines of Java than any other language, 
I was trying to decide whether to teach Java or JavaScript. What was what would be the first language I would teach between the two? It was difficult for me because Java has a lot more you have to do to write the code versus JavaScript. But at the same time, because Java is strongly typed, it's stricter than JavaScript. Its strictness actually makes it easier in certain ways to get your head wrapped around the concepts. Uh, I've written TypeScript with Angular. It's nice. It's kind of like Java. There, there you go. Uh, hi, what do you think about using a Firebase as your main backend? I haven't used it, so I couldn't say. Is there any point using it without an ID or is it only for development? Is there any point in using it without an ID if it's only for development? I'm not sure if I follow your question. Uh, first thing that pops in my head is all languages are for development. But anyway, tell us more about PHP 8 and Laravel's use in the future. Well, PHP 8, I hear, is coming out soon. I don't have, um, I haven't looked at PHP 8. It's just adding, I think, more enterprise level functionality. So it won't have a huge impact, I would imagine, in terms of most programmers out there. But it, I think it's a worthy upgrade as far as I understand. Um, what else can I say about it? Laravel, PHP 8 are not going anywhere. Uh, P Laravel is such an important part of the PHP community because it, it really brings an, uh, a world-class framework to the PHP, although Symfony here is very good as well. And I think PHP is partly based on Symfony. So uh, I'm waiting for JavaScript to get a Hemi. I don't know what that means. But... Look what I find in here while looking for late night entertainment. There you go. How you doing, Didi? I hope everything is well. I uh, hope that freezing water is doing you well. Hey, Matthew, how are you? Happy holidays, Steph. Thank you for everything this year. Not a problem. Happy. Thanks for uh, jumping on board. I enjoy what I do. Otherwise, I would not do it. So I'm hap happy to see that people are getting value out of it. What do you think about Blazor? Have to look at it. Uh... When will you make a TypeScript course? I'm working on a bunch of other stuff, but you know what? That might be something to do, something basic they can throw out there. You do my JavaScript, and then you can learn TypeScript in like 20 videos very pretty quickly, you know? You almost never ASP.NET. Is it worse than Ruby? No, no, no. Nothing is worse than Ruby. Nothing is worse than Ruby. Uh, I, I don't know. ASP.NET, I think it's cool. I haven't used it in a long time, but so you know, it's not no reason for it in particular. Someone just suggested to use Ruby for MVP of SaaS product as it would be speedy. Should we? Why not? It, it, you know, speed of production. Um, yeah, it's fast. You, but you, you know, any of the modern frameworks will give you the same sort of um, development performance. Uh, whether, whether it be Python Django or uh, PHP Laravel, etc., or ASP.NET, depends, you know. Um, I wouldn't because I, I find that PHP and uh, the other solutions are scale better, but that's up to you. Ruby on Rails isn't the next best thing today, so it's good technology to use because it's mature. Yeah, that's a good thing about Ruby. It is Rails is mature. There's no question about that. And... The, the whole development community, especially in terms of the web stack, oh, the Rails community is sort of debt of gratitude because they introduced um, some key concepts that everybody adopted a long time ago. Can we expect Angular to reach new heights thanks to this news? I don't know. I don't know. My, my, my money is on uh, Vue and React. Hey, Steph, do you think that it's a good idea to create a blog to build some reputation? Well, it depends what your goal is, you know. Why not? Uh, better to build people's blogs and people's build a software and then maybe talk about that software de development. Um, that might be a good, better way to develop a good reputation. But yeah, developing reputation is huge. I'm going to be covering that a lot more. See, my code courses are pretty complete. And so, and I update what I need to update so that everybody's up to date. So in January, February, March, I'm going to be releasing a lot of soft skills, if you will, uh, education, which I think is really needed for everybody. And uh, some more stuff as well. So I'm excited about that because 
It's also stuff I, I haven't taught before publicly. I've been teaching this stuff, you know, behind the scenes for a long time. So that's going to come up. And maybe I'll throw in a little bit of TypeScript in there. I mean, who knows? We'll see. Um, Mr. Tash. Uh, if TypeScript becomes the norm, this will mean Microsoft will own the Internet. I think JS will have become typed for that not to happen. I think JS will have to become typed for that to not happen. That, that would be an interesting thing. I don't know if people would do it. They might because they would have to change all the engines, right, in the browsers and so on. Uh, best JS framework to learn. It's job centric. I always tell people when you want to learn uh, a framework, f f look for the jobs. What are the job opportunities and base your choice on that, right? You may think that Vue.js is the best one, but if there's no jobs for you, then it's not too good. At the same time, I kind of believe it's, it's Vue, right now, Vue, React, Angular in that order. Although, again, check the jobs. It may, you might find a lot more job opportunities with React, so then that would be the order. It would be React, Vue, and Angular. Or maybe Angular is very popular in your area. Depends on the type of work you want to do. Um, I think that each of these frameworks have their pros and their cons in terms of technical uh, implementations. And so a lot of times the choices are really come down to personal taste, job opportunity, and the job at hand. Uh, that's a broader statement about all the programming languages, all the frameworks out there. Everything's very mature. It's not what it was 15 years ago where you would see radical changes in the tech where one would be so much better than the other. All right, I got a sip of coffee. Mm. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thomas, what do you think about Perl as a language for web administration? It's still probably fairly widely used. The problem with Perl, well, it used to be the problem. I haven't looked at Perl in many years. I've written Perl in the past. Is that it? You there's so many flavors, and it's so flexible that the code becomes very, very hard to maintain. And I, there was an old Perl joke. There was an old joke rather in the Perl community in that regard. You'd write Perl, and six months later, you'd forget what 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 you were trying to do with the Perl. And that's the problem with loosey-goosey languages. They give you a lot of flexibility so you can bang out something quick. But the problem with that is that then the code is, um, there's inconsistencies within the code base potentially, which could be a disaster to maintain. Ah, all right. Uh, can you help me? What are the use cases for Node Express backend, Django backend, or using Go, like which is best to use? You know, I would use, you know, off top of my head, uh, Node if you want to get into multi-threaded type of uh, applications. And uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I think, um, again, these things are neck and neck. A lot of it has to do with job opportunities, has to do with the specifics of the projects. You know, when I was, looking at uh, putting out the new version of Studio Web, where we, we were going to do, we, we did a rewrite ultimately from scratch. And I was looking at different tech. I was looking at Node. I was looking at PHP, PHP Laravel, Python Django briefly, um, and some other stuff briefly. And I went with PHP Laravel for a bunch of reasons, but again, it's all very neck and neck these days. So. Hey, Steph, what technologies are you watching in 2021? Well, I think that the web stack in, its, in all its form, forms is going to become more important even. It's the most important altogether these days. I think with um, uh, 5G coming on board, with super fast phones that we see, uh, the need for native development is going to continue to diminish. This is a message I've been talking about for a few years now. So I think that the web stuff is just going to get better. And this TypeScript development is just an example of that. Uh, you could write your PWAs with TypeScript. Uh, you're going to have tr extreme performance. You're not going to see uh, a huge advantage or any advantage in many applications in terms of writing native mobile, meaning Kotlin or Java for Android or uh, Swift for iOS. 
simply because the, the, the hardware and the software is just getting so good. And with cross-platform solutions like uh, PWAs, which is WebStack, or Flutter maybe, um, they're going to become more and more popular. That's what I think. I think that's the future. That's why I teach the web stack, because I think it's just the most flexible in terms of job-wise, money-wise, uh, you know, opportunity-wise. Otherwise, I would teach something else, you know? Um, so that's what I think is going to happen in the future. Uh, by mature, is that a nice way of saying slow when it comes to Ruby? <laughs> Mm. V's Mag. Hey, Stefan, how often do you have to do DOM manipulation with JavaScript on a real job? It depends on the job, but most of the time it's very minor. Uh, for most web app development, uh, it's, it's all basically um, HTML, CSS, touch of JavaScript, and then the backend language, whether it be Python Django or PHP Laravel or .NET, etc. Um, yeah, DOM manipulation, depending, you know, depending. But most of the time, the DOM manipulation is a very small part of it all. Just like algorithms. Algorithms, everybody's going, algorithms, algorithms. A lot of people want to sell you algorithm courses, algorithms. But in most development, you're, you're, you're barely touching on algorithms and you've just leveraged libraries where the algorithms are all predefined for you. It's more about architecture and just good, clean, co best coding practices. Having tried Mant stacks, I guess that's many stacks, I found that Microsoft's gives the fastest dev time, mostly thanks to Visual Studio first class tools and debugging capabilities. I would not be surprised about that. Microsoft has a long tradition going back to the 1990s of putting together rock solid dev tools, like rock solid dev tools. Visual Studio was always king. Uh, I'm sure Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code is, 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 is fantastic. For me, it would be a tough choice between Microsoft uh, code editors versus uh, JetBrains. They're both really, really good. Uh, that said, I'm sure all the, the code editors these days are quite good nowadays, anyhow. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I figured it was many. Uh, all right, what do we got here? Going through your freelancing and business courses right now, what amount of JavaScript is enough to get diving in and building projects so I can eventually start freelancing? Most of the freelancing work will be... Uh, in terms of languages, will be HTML, CSS, PHP. Um, most of the freelancing work, just in terms of raw number of lines of code and opportunity. Why? It's just because of the market. Again, a lot of times when I'm talking about this language or that language and so on, most of the time I'm not really talking about technical efficiencies of the languages because I, I, I believe that they're all pretty good depending on circumstances. I always consider the uh, market uh, market issues, you know, marketability of the language, if you will. Yeah, so you know, I say when you're learning this stuff, HTML, CSS, be good with layout and stuff, and uh, know your baseline JavaScript. Uh, but having good understanding of the back end is is going to be more valuable to to you in terms of making money. React is by far the most popular. Yeah, that's true. PWS wrestling promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NWA. Verse V, Visual Studio Code is an amazing editor. Once he started using it, I can't go back to Sublime. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's we'll see what we got here. I'm not able to see the vision of web development, how to become financially independent. I am currently a Node.js Express PHP Laravel doing masters, and I should I combine digital marketing and web? Um, you know, it's not about technical, you know, to become financially independent. It's about business skills and interpersonal skills and communication skills. And then you throw in a little bit of financial sense some basic financial skills about how to manage your funds. The big mistake people make when they start making more money is they start spending a lot more money. And you have to be disciplined in terms of uh, how you 
uh, manage the extra, the extra money as it comes in. Like, the, way, the way it worked for me, when, it started, when the development money started rolling in for me, I did not upgrade my lifestyle. I kept it pretty, pretty much the same. And what happened, you know, you know, the average person, if they're good, they'll save 10% of their money per year, 15%, and then, you know, in 25 years, they retire. But I started saving 50, 60, 70, 80% of my money. So if you think about it, in one year, I would save what the average person would take eight years to do. In three years, I would save what the average person took 24 years to do. So you can see how if you just discipline yourself, once you start making the money, you can find yourself in a very good position financially. And this is not, this is not having won the lottery. It's just a question of just living below your means a little bit longer while the extra money rolls in and saving. Because when you, when you saved, you know, 24, 20... Oh, the streaming stopped. Sorry about that. Got kicked off. I'm not sure it's my router or it's just the internet. Oh boy. Hmm. I'm gonna have to work on that. Anyway, so um, yeah. So it makes this this story is to make you feel good if you're still on there. Um, <clears throat> so we didn't. We ended up not buying the bitcoins because we got three quarters of the process. We didn't buy them. They were four four cents a piece, five cents a piece. We were just gonna sit on them. Now, I don't think, you know, realistically, we would have sat on the Bitcoins till today. But our Bitcoins today would be worth half a billion dollars. So, you know, don't feel bad about uh, making financial mistakes in your early uh, life. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've done okay, but uh, not a half a billion dollars okay. All right, there you go. Um, I hope everybody can still see me. I think I'm going to try getting a new, new router. Okay. Any questions? Let's see what we got. If it's true that different Python versions, extensions, and dependencies are a compatibility nightmare to maintain, that I don't know. That I don't know. I haven't uh, looked at that, that lately. Like, I've... I teach Python, I've done a course, um, I've worked with Python a bit, but not, I'm not a major Python coder, so I couldn't say, especially lately. So, but um, yeah, that's one of the things, that's one of the strengths of like .NET and Java and uh, PHP world even, is that you have, uh, it's pretty consistent. And when you do upgrades, things don't fall apart so easily, you know? Uh, let's see what's going on. The value slash importance of the web stack in positioning your marketing output. The value of the web stack. I think it's key. I think it's key, as I said. Uh, well, at least you got into Bitcoin. At least you got in. Yeah, here's another piece of advice. I look back at my investment career, and I have lost, uh, lost. By selling out positions, rather than just holding, I have lost massive, massive amounts of money, uh, gains. But I, I, you know, I, I would like, for example, just with Apple. I remember uh, ten years ago, I bought it. I said ah, it's going to be the biggest tech company in the world. It was back in what twelve years ago, what it was, and I sold out. I made sixty percent in within a year. And then it, uh, then then we had the, the correction, the big crash. And I was feeling like I'm a maniac. But since then, it's gone up 20 times. So I was dumb to have sold it, of course. Um, I'm back in. But um, I would suggest that when you buy investments, just hold them for life. Just hold them for life. And trust me, in the end, you're going to do much better. Uh, is it expensive to host Python? Oh, let me get this in. Is it expensive to host Python Django? I don't think it's any more expensive than anything else. Hosting is typically uh, the minimal asp cost in anything. You know, it's uh, the coding time is the most expensive part. Uh, what is the age range for taking risk? Like investing in stiff. What is the age range for taking risk? Oh, 
as you get older, uh, your f financial output, I guess, how much you're going to make will slowly diminish past your 50s. You peak out in your 40s and 50s. Um, so as you get closer and closer to retirement, you should take less and less risk. So, but if you have a long runway, 10 years or more, then, you know, again, I'm not a financial advisor. Legally, I can't tell you what to do. But what I've seen over the decades, literally, is that um, if you have a long time horizon, you want to be out there and holding for a while, not, build, not playing it too safe. Especially now, I think there's going to be, uh, yeah, I think so. Well, the 27th, you know. We'll do one. If my computer sucks, which language should I learn? And I mean, develop something like mobile or desktop app. I would go web because you can do PWA, you, you know, for mobile. Uh, you can do desktop. I would do web. Web just gives you the most flexibility and you don't need a powerful computer because you're not compiling anything. What you like, audio book or paperback or Kindle for self-help books, business books, etc. What? What you like, audiobook. What audiobooks and paperback? You know, I'm going to put together a list. I'll do that in January. I'll include that part of the soft skills. My top five recommend books. Good call. Uh, yeah. Uh, I agree. Just buy and hold Bitcoin works. Deferral of gratification, long term thinking. Yeah, I couldn't say about Bitcoin because it's very volatile, but perhaps long term. Uh, but yeah, as a general, yeah, deferral gratification is one of the key uh, things, you skills, if you will, that you can develop in one's life. Um, so what is that? You defer, meaning you put off, you hold off, you resist trying to gratify yourself, your senses, whatever they may be. What they have seen in the science is that people who can defer gratification not need to be satisfied so quickly, in the end, they do much, 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 much better. So I'll be talking about this in Lizard Wizard. So there's this famous study uh, they did way back in the day where they brought in a bunch of kids and they had some, and they said, okay, kids, I don't know, six or 10, 12, six or 10 year old, something. It's something you learn in Psych 101. That was my major in university. Anyway, so they had these kids come in. They said, okay, kids, you can have two marshmallows right now, or if you wait, whatever, 50 minutes or half an hour, whatever it was, you can have five marshmallows. Two now or five later. And what they found, so some kids took the two right away. They did not defer gratification. And other kids said, okay, I'll wait, the, I'll wait and I'll get my five marshmallows a little later. Anyway, so they tracked these, these people into adulthood. And what they found is that all the kids who deferred gratification, who waited for the extra marshmallows, who waited a, few, you know, a little bit more long, they waited a little longer for the marshmallows, they ended up doing much, 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 much better in life. So it's a strong indicator of uh, how are you going to do. So if you can hold off gratification, deferred gratification, then in the end, you'd be much better off. But guess what? There are tricks to, uh, there are little hacks, there are little tricks in which you can give yourself a gratification or a sense of gratification while still deferring it. That's going to be discussed in my Lizard Wizard book. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be cool. So yeah, right, right about that. Deferment of gratification is a huge thing. All right, how are we doing for people? So we're eight minutes in. Wait a second. Okay, we timed off. Okay. Would you be able to spar these days? What is your fab boxing combo? I would be able to spar. I would be able to spar. My, you know, when you don't spar for a while, your timing gets soft, and it takes a couple months for your timing to get back into play. Um, if you don't know, when it comes to fighting, ring fighting anyway, timing and tactics are far more important than what people realize. Uh, my favorite combo? Depends who you're fighting. When I was firing, fighting taller guys, which was rare, because I'm 6'2", 
when I was fighting taller guys, I like uh, left jab, come in with a right hook to the butt, to the ribs, and then a right uppercut. I, I got that from Mike Tyson. I watched Mike Tyson do that. It works all the time. Uh, when you're dealing with shorter people, there's just a lot of jabbing. I was a heavy jabber. But yeah, I could still spar, but I'm, I'm getting a little old now. You know, my, 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 um, your reflex goes as you get older. And when it comes to fighting, when you, especially when you're high-level competition, not that I was great, but... Um, even if your timing, your, your reflex is off by half a second, you start getting hit a lot more. And uh, so I'm, I'm ugly enough as it is, so I don't need to get hit anymore. So I haven't sparred really in a long time. <laughs> I miss it though. Hi, I'm about to complete my boot camp education. I have been taught Ruby on Rails on the back end and React and Redux on the front end. Is it helpful if I become AWS certified to find my first career in tech? No, now what you do, is you put up a website, make sure it looks good, detailing your skills, and then you go out and you do one to two free freelance jobs, something that you can show on your resume website. Why do you want to do free freelance jobs? Because showing your school projects is not very compelling. What's compelling is showing a pr prospective employer that you can actually work with people and put out a project. So that's what your next step. You've, you've done enough learning, uh, academic. Now is the time to actually start coding and earning. Uh, what you'll see is the first three years of your work or more will be a lot of learning as you go. So if you're properly trained with whatever stacks you learned, um, you should be able to, and I imagine you will be able to, to learn something new depending on the needs of the job. So you're Ruby Rails trained, fine. You may find a Python Django job, but don't be afraid to, to apply for it. Uh, or uh, a Node.js job, or a, a PHP Laravel job. It's, it's very similar. They're all very similar, okay? So that's what you gotta do. All right, how are we doing? Uh, let's go on. All right, another 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna leave you guys to your holiday cheer. I got a bunch of texts I gotta answer. I am currently working as a motion designer specialized in web. Very cool. What do you think about changing paths from designer to developer or being a designer developer specializing in web? Well, what I would do is I would, again, start looking around, see what the job opportunities are. What do, I don't know, what do you specialize, what do you prefer? You know, what do you prefer? If you don't know the back end yet, I would learn the back end because it's just going to open up a lot more job opportunities. That's what I would do. Uh, I, I, uh, hey, Steph, what is your New Year's resolution? I don't do I don't do those. I, I, you know, I don't do those. It's just a, a date. You know, I think. Uh, for me, I'm just excited about uh, the new material that I'm going to be putting out because it's, it's, it's going to be going into um, a different silo, if you will, not pure technical. Uh, so psychology, um, communication skills. So I've done coding and front end, back end, uh, uh, architecture. I've done uh, freelancing, entrepreneurship. So I'm gonna, I think this is going to sort of bring it all together. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of fun to put that out. Uh, what's your Cosmo Afterlife Seption? What's your New Year's resolution? What is your biggest business regret? Oof. I don't even want to think about it. I've told people, if I sat back and thought about all my business regrets, out of pride, I would have to kill myself. That's a joke. Uh, I hope you don't bite ears like Mike Tyson. <laughs> no, I never bit, bit ears. Um, at least not boxing. Um, Mike Tyson bit ears because Evander Holyfield was headbutting him over and over again. Um, Evander Holyfield was a very good and sly headbutter, which is a legal move and it's very damaging. So Mike Tyson was getting headbutt over and over and over again. So he got very frustrated. So he bit him back. And I know it's, uh, it's biting seems more 
more visceral. But, you know, Holyfield shouldn't have been headbutting him. And it's not just my opinion. Lennox Lewis recently was talking about that in a podcast, how Holyfield was headbutting him too. And he felt that Mike Lennox Lewis, one of the most uh, civil guys in boxing, right? Heavyweight champion. Uh, one of the best. I think he was the best of his generation, personally. And uh, he was saying Tyson was justified in biting Holyfield. I don't know if that's the case, but Holyfield was headbutting uh, Lennox Lewis a lot. He says he has permanent scars from, from uh, Holyfield's headbutting. The thing is, because Lewis is much taller, the headbutting wasn't nearly as damaging to him as it was uh, Holyfield's headbutting of Tyson. This is according to Tyson and, Hol and uh, Lennox Lewis. And I could see it too, he was, he was headbutting. And apparently Lewis was said that Holyfield would have a tire around his heavy bag. And he's like, why does he have a tire? Because he would practice headbutting on the tire. Boom. So if you watch that fight, that's why Mike Tyson lost it. He said, this guy's headbutting. He's getting, getting headbutting. He's getting cut and getting headbutt, which is a legal move. It's a dangerous move. So um, anyway, that's what they say. So Lewis said that too. So that was interesting to me. But I, I could see the headbutting at the time. New Year's resolution for me is to survive 2021. <laughs> that's a great resolution. That's a great resolution. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How many schools are using Studio Web? I'm not going to say that because that's like uh, it's like asking me how much I'm worth. But uh, I can tell you that uh, a lot of schools have used Studio Web over the years. Oh, uh, uh, uh. David, what area did you study in computer? to give you a solid grip on programming and understanding on computer program uh, in general. Um, I learned how to write code for my first business, which has nothing to do with coding. And then it just sort of, sp it sprang out of utility from there. And I, the web was growing super fast. Uh, so I just, you know, I learned my basics. And then I just uh, learned architecture, and then I just built projects. So bad sportsmanship from both ends. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But, uh, you know, I might have to... Re I, I was been involved in competition, right? And um, uh, I, I have to... I'll address the super chat. Thanks for the super chat. All right. Thanks for the coffee. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Coding Brian. Is TypeScript good for enterprise level coding like GIA? I heard Node isn't because it's not statically typed to its right thoughts. Yeah, I think that um, statically typed uh, language, languages uh, are, uh, by their very nature, easier to maintain. Uh, so you could argue that. Um, I would have to look at TypeScript, but strong, I like strongly typed languages as a matter of uh, principle. Um, just from my experience, it's just easier to debug. Uh, your lighting looks particularly great today. Likewise, audio is super awesome. To just want to drop a compliment. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting me know. I'm uh, always trying to improve it. Um, I got my mic right here. So I'm trying to always improve your game. Always try to improve your game, right? How are we doing? 142? All right. Uh... Do you provide in any of your courses an example of a freelance contract memorandum or of understanding that can be used with new clients, dating, deadlines, fees? Yeah, in my freelance course, I have uh, templates for these things. Uh, time tracker, basic contracts, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the contract is, is, you know, you have to, you know, at different parts of the world have different laws and so forth, but it, there's a, there's a standard uh, lowest common denominator in terms of contracts, so that's in there as well. So yeah, for sure. Uh, would you recommend M1 for web coding? I heard for certain apps, M1 is, they haven't compiled it yet, but that's going to happen any month now. I'm a huge believer in the M1 technology. Um, in full transparency, and I, I, I put, I dumped more money into Apple when I saw the M1 tech. I think it's a game changer. I think Apple is going to come in there and stomp, stomp all over the hardware world in terms of the PC end. 
Um, that's why I heard Microsoft is actually coming up with their own ARM chips. Intel, uh, not not too good. It's not looking too good for Intel, I would imagine. But no, their their M1 chips are a game changer. So yeah, I think uh, you get so much power for reasonable price. You get a Mac Air M1, you got like a super powerful computer. There, again, there might be some things that are not perfect yet, but that you know. I think it's such an important technology. I think it's kind of like iPhone uh, in that everything is going to come in and work for that. So that's my opinion on that. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? It is a Christmas movie. You know what's another Christmas movie? Bad Santa. Bad, B-A-D, Santa with Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, it's one of the funniest movies. I have a, an old friend of mine I went to high school with. I haven't talked to him for years because he's, he's like... Uh, Thornton's main key. He's just basically like Billy Bob's character, almost identical. That's why I don't talk to him anymore, but he's, this is funny. I recommend Bad Santa with Die Hard. Last question. If Python Django is becoming more popular, why teach PHP? PHP is still insanely popular. Um, I think for server-side programming, for server-side programming, I think it's still the most popular language. It's not going anywhere. Um, again, one of the main messages that I try to convey is that once you learn programming, the language becomes irrelevant uh, almost. It just depends on the job. It's like learning how to drive manual. Once you learn how to drive a Porsche manual, then you can drive Ferrari manual. You can drive Audi manual. You can drive BMW manual. The key is learning to drive manual. PHP is just... Uh, it's just there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff out there you know, done in PHP. So you know it's number six, right? Uh, it's the number six most popular language in the first few like C, C plus plus is in the top, and uh, you know those are not web development languages. So you can see how popular PHP is. Uh, could you recommend some microphones for online syncs, Zoom? A lot of microphones are very good. It's like, it depends what your budget is. And like, I use professional mics that have XOR inputs. Uh, you can get good USB mics, they're fine. Uh, it depends what your budget is, but $99 mics are fine, you know, for most people. Um, depends on how you're miking. Like, this mic is out of the screen, if I put it here. So, because I don't want the mic to appear in the window, I get this type of directional microphone. It, it, it seeks out the sound. But you have other mics where, it, it, where it, you have to be right up to the mic for it to work well. So it depends what you're doing. Yeah, Bad Santa is pretty funny stuff. There's no question about that. All right. Yeah, they're great, they're great. Sad to see them go. Two funny, funny, funny guys. What's the biggest difference between your complete web designer and a complete web developer course? The web designer just teaches the front end and the web developer is front and back end, that's all. Uh, here we go. I was a motion designer, but changed to JS for full stack developer. There is a skill overlap in front end, of course, after effects, scripting, and games. There's even tech artist trend. Go for it. There you go. Good advice from Anthony. Uh, yeah, the Grinch. There's a lot of seasonal favorites. The Grinch. There's Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, Frosty the Snowman. I don't know if they still play those. Uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Bad Santa. Die Hard. And uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is the last, last one. Yeah, very Christmas, everybody. Very Christmas. All right. All right, let's see what they say about PHPA. PHPA is really great with its new strongly typed features. There you go. Still not as good as Java, for example, but it's getting there. Yeah. That's why I figured they're going to enterprise with whatever it is they're doing here. Uh, I know all the basics, HTML, CSS, JS. Please, I did to build. I want to be a front-end developer. I would go out there and just look for maybe a nonprofit or a small business job you got to do. You got to take that leap going from just code to actually, you know, doing tutorials and courses to actually doing something, you know. 
you got to take that leap of faith and do it. You got to understand that you're not going to come into a job knowing everything. It's the process of being a developer is part of that process is learning new tech and adapting new tech to the needs of the job. You know, Lord of the Rings, a Christmas movie. I don't know. Maybe for some people, I, you know, I like Lord of the Rings. Big fan. You know. Hey, no worries, man. Oh no, Anthony Dev. Ah, uh, there we go. What do you think about Linux and its future? Should we should we learn using of Linux? Only if you need to. Only if you need to. Maybe learn basic Unix commands and Linux commands for the sake of uh, GitHub and repo. That's about it, you know. There you go. I'm watching. It's Christmas time in Canada for, from Self. That's going to be a great Christmas movie. Uh, there you go. I don't know. The South Park guys, they got something against, Canadian, something against Canadians. We're too nice or something. Is Java going down or not? Well, it may, I think it's on a slow decline, but it may take 20 years for that to happen. <laughs> Again, don't worry about it. You can move from one language to the next. If you're a Java expert, for you to move to C Sharp, to move to TypeScript, to move to JavaScript, to move to Python. Don't worry about it, it's no big deal. All right, guys, I think we're done for the Christmas stream. Um, I hope everything is good. I'm gonna let you go, it's 3.40. Merry Christmas, if, if applicable. And um, maybe I'll do another stream before New Year's, we'll see, I don't know. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon, take care of yourselves. The COVID thing I, should be over soon. I hope, hope by spring at least. That's about it. So cheers. I'll leave you with my ASMR uh, main video, Cape Elizabeth. We'll talk soon. Thanks for joining in. Bye-bye-bye.